I'm Assemblyman Chris Tagg, and I approve this message. <laughs> Governor Cuomo, New York State Legislative Majority Members, and Dr. Zucker, unmask our kids now. I don't think he heard us. Governor Cuomo, Dr. Zucker, unmask our kids now! What an awesome crowd here. Thank you to all the moms, dads, and the kids. Thank you. It's on. I want to thank all of you for joining me here today to take a stand for our children. While our children themselves may not be heard in our political discourse, I know that parents throughout New York have been hearing just how much their children have struggled every day through this pandemic. Children are confused, scared, and exhausted. Many of us couldn't fathom wearing a mask in a room with no air conditioning for hours at a time. And we're telling them they have to keep wearing their masks even as, as adults in their lives begin to take theirs off in public. Even as they play sports in school and participate in athletic programs, children remain masked throughout this state. The data is clear. Positivity rates in our state have plummeted. And in the months since the pandemic has started, we've learned that children in schools don't spread COVID-19 much at all. Even in the period before they were forced to start wearing masks, vaccination rates in New York far exceed the national average. So my question is, why do we contain, why do we continue to maintain such a burdensome mandate? <laughs> that data shows is entirely unnecessary. That's the question I pose today to the governor, commissioner of health, and those in the legislative majorities. Folks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Folks, we just have days left in this legislative session. And if we don't act now, many children will be forced to wear masks beyond even these last few weeks of school. And we'll have to wear them in summer school and daycare programs, summer camps, even as the weather becomes hotter and harder to bear. We need to put the pressure on, like on never before, for our kids to prevent this senseless mandate from persisting any longer. I urge every single person here and everybody at home, reach out to your representatives and demand they follow the science and do the right thing. Let's do the right thing for our kids by passing my bill. I've introduced a bill to prohibit the masking of our children by state agencies in schools, daycares, athletic fields, and similar settings, whether indoors or outdoors. This senseless suffering cannot go on any longer. <laughs> so I say one more time, Governor Cuomo, unmask our children now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you the leader of the Republican Conference, Leader Will Barkley. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Now, what press conference are we at? What press conference is this at? Is this Unmask Our Children Now press conference? Let's hear it one more time. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Children. I want to thank Chris Tagg and the Republican Assembly Conference for bringing this legislation before, uh, uh, before us today.
We're going to try to get a pass. It's a tall order, but we're going to do this type of press to put the pressure on the majorities in both houses. Uh, we need to get it done. I just want to thank our conference for speaking a strong, clear, logical voice during this whole pandemic. We've seen one mandate after another come down from this governor that don't make any sense. They're not based on any kind of scientific uh, or public health, good public health policy. So it's this type of thing, these masks on children that don't make sense. And I'm glad we're all out here trying to push back about it. One thing we did on Monday, we did a press conference talking about taking back the state of emergency, canceling the state of emergency. We're fortunately finally coming out of this pandemic and we ought to start acting, about, acting like we are. I just want to share some few facts. Few facts, yeah, go ahead, we'll clap on that. Let's be thankful. The statewide seven-day average positivity is 0.51%. We've had a decline for the 64 consecutive days, lowest in the country. Thank goodness, thank goodness, we have only, only, but 796 patients hospitalized. That's the lowest number since October. And our statewide vaccination rate's almost 70%. Those numbers show, that's the science, those are the facts. Those numbers show we're coming out of the pandemic. So just like this, we gotta do policies that make sense. Let's stop these census policies like requiring our children to be masked at school. So let's unmask our children now. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, leader, for your leadership on this conference and on this bill. At this time, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to introduce my friend and, and colleague uh, and the ranker um, at Ways and Means, my good friend, Assemblyman Ed Ra. Thank you, Assemblyman Tague. Thank you, Leader Barkley. You know, Assemblyman Tague is a fighter, and I am always happy to stand by his side in a fight. And this is a fight worth having for our children. As I walked out here, a number of my colleagues were remarking about how hot it is. Well, let's think about what it's like for our school kids that are sitting in a classroom with no air circulation in masks. It's never been more clear after what happened this weekend when that magical uh, Friday afternoon announcement that we've all come to expect from this administration when they want to throw news out there and then all the confusion over the weekend and then our parents finding out Sunday night, Monday morning that they were still expected to send their kids to school and have them sit in 90 degree temperatures wearing masks. Enough is enough. Let's get this done now and unmask our kids. Thank you. Now I'd all like you to please welcome, uh, join me in welcoming someone who, who is no stranger to advocating for children. My friend and colleague, Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank Chris Take for putting this press conference together and for all the parents and kids who have come out to talk about and express all the problems that this has caused over the last year and a half and that it's time for this masking to stop in our schools, our daycares, and our summer camps. As was said, the seven day positivity average is one half of 1% right now, all right? It's 80% humidity out right now. As Assemblyman Ross said, just imagine it, how hot and humid it is in those schools right now. Now just imagine that you're a kid with asthma. Imagine that you're a kid with allergies. You've got to wear that mask. That is unhealthy. It is unhealthy for these kids to do that. And you know what? The state certainly has an interest in making sure that our kids are safe. But parents, teachers, they know their kids. They know what's best for their kids. They should be empowered and allowed to make decisions that are right for their kids. It's their right. This has been a situation where it's been, as a state leader, it's been embarrassing to watch the agencies that can't get their policies straight and can't follow the procedures properly, to, to, to drop a bomb like the unmasking, which we all celebrated last Friday, after school ended, 
was really hard for teachers and, and students and boards of education and school districts to even absorb it and then to have it yanked back out for Monday. It's just, it's impossible. Uh, this teachers union described it as whiplash. It is whiplash. Uh, they need to get their policies straight. They need to stop saying one thing and then the other state agencies saying another thing and then the governor saying something in the press conference and then somebody else taking it back the next minute. It's, it's wrong. It's wrong for parents and it's really wrong for kids. They need to know what the rules are. Kids will follow the rules if they know what the rules are. They might not like their masks, they might hate their masks, but they're gonna follow the rules if the rules are laid out for them in, in the right way. Let's be consistent with the science and the data. That's something that we've heard from the governor all through this pandemic crisis. Follow that one half of 1% and the knowledge that kids are not good transmitters of this disease. It's wrong to keep these kids masked. Unmask our children now. Thank you, Assemblywoman Walsh. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker, someone who has stood for liberty, our constitution, and common sense very, very many times. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to introduce my colleague, Assemblyman Andy Goodell. So here we are in front of the state capitol. And as you can see behind me, it's all blocked off, isn't it? It looks like it's under siege. The rest of the world is unmasked. And what happens if you come on the floor of the assembly? Well, first of all, most of you can't get there because the people's house is close to the people. But if you do get there, you'll find that the state assembly is still wearing masks. Not in any store, not in any business, not anywhere else, but here in Albany, we're not leading, we're following. We're following the common sense from everybody else. I found it particularly frustrating this morning because after stopping at the uh, chamber to drop off my papers, I went to that door behind you. Can't get out without setting off alarms. Well, we're here to sound the alarm today. That's right. yeah. 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 That's right. Our kids do not need to grow up in a hospital environment. They need to be kids. Thank God they can still swim without masks. Don't report that or that might be the new edict. We need to let our kids live their childhood safely and they can do it without masks. Give the power back to the parents. Let our kids live a life. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman Goodell. And thank you to all of my colleagues that are here today. Um, at this time, it is a true pleasure to introduce to you Jeff Thomas. Jeff is the founder of Unmask Our New York School Children and a father of four. Jeff? Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, this pandemic has affected us all, but it's taken the biggest toll on our beautiful children. The mask mandate has had a horrific impact on all of our kids. We're finally experiencing an end to the pandemic and, re and a return to normal life, but not our children. If we, ga if we can gather without masks in stores, restaurants, churches, daycares, summer camps, sporting venues, then why are our children still required to wear masks, forced to wear masks in school? Children are not spreaders of this virus. Children have statistically a zero chance of mortality from COVID-19. Experts also state mask wearing is having a negative effect on our children, affecting their breathing, affecting their mental state, 
their overall health and development. Can you imagine sitting in a class earlier this week, 96 degrees, and having to wear a mask, being forced to wear a mask? Can you imagine driving home in a bus, it's 96 degrees out, unair conditioned, being forced to wear a mask? If any of us, if our cars break down with air conditioning, we call AAA. Car goes to the shop. We can't do it. Why are we making our kids do it? If we go to a restaurant, we walk. A couple weeks ago, we had to go to a restaurant wear a mask till we sat down. We couldn't wait to get that mask off. Ten seconds. We had to rip it off. Our children are forced to wear it while learning all day. Why is our governor forcing our healthy children to wear masks? They're not spreaders of the virus. They have a zero mortality rate. Our children are forced to wear a mask. They live in a constant state of fear because of it. Let's ponder what their thoughts might be throughout the day. I can't breathe this air. This air is going to make me sick. This air is going to kill me. I can't breathe, but I have to wear this mask because the adults are making me put this thing over my nose and mouth. How horrific is that for our children to be thinking of this all day? Side effects reported by children, by parents of children who wear a mask are headaches. And I'm a father of two school-aged children, and I'll tell you, these, these effects are real. Difficult to concentrate, increased reluctance to go to school, unhappiness, impaired learning, drowsiness, fatigue, and claustrophobia. To put it simply, when wearing a mask, our children get a general feeling of discomfort illness and uneasiness. We must also consider that our teachers are behind a mask. And when our teacher's lips are behind a mask, their speech is muffled. Wearing a mask makes it harder for our children to develop speaking skills, prevents children with hearing impairments from lip reading. How are our children supposed to develop social skills when they can't sit, play, or even hang out together in school? How can children in a, in a classroom learn speech nuances when they can't see the teacher's face? Masks are dehumanizing. They erase our facial expressions. They discourage communication. Children need to see what adults are feeling with their face. And let me put this really simple. Children need to see smiles. Our children haven't seen a smile in school in over a year. As we are all returning to normalcy, our children deserve the same rights to have a happy, healthy, and productive lives. The masks are doing nothing to help our children. If you are a parent of a school-aged child, as I am, two of them, young ones, I'm sure you're horrified at the condition that mask comes, comes back at the end of the day. Some of them are forced to pull it up after chewing, after taking a bite. These masks are breeding grounds for infection caused by bacteria, fungus, and mold. The science is clear. All parties mandating the use of face masks are willfully ignoring established science. Our kids are uncomfortable in these masks. They can't breathe. Just last night, and I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but yesterday when my child got home from school, she's seven years old, she's in first grade, I noticed a big change in her demeanor. And I noticed she said, Dad, I'm not feeling well. And she says, the mask and the heat. And I said to her, I said, "Hun, you don't have to go to school tomorrow. She says, Dad, I want to go to school. I want to learn. How sad and how horrific. I started this group uh, only two weeks ago. I was hoping to get 200 people in our Facebook group, Unmasked New York Children, now uh, on Facebook. I was hoping to get 200. Last night when I went to bed, 3,400 members. When I woke up this morning, 7,000 members. I'll, re I'll repeat the tagline, enough is enough, unmask our children now. And with all that bad news we just heard, there's some great news, okay? We have great legislators, like these legislators here today. Great legislators like Assemblyman Chris Tagg and all of them that care about our children and are willing to do what's right and stand up for our kids. How blessed are we to have these legislators? Now our, our prayer, our prayer, and I believe in prayer, last night I got down on my knees asked for guidance, our prayer is that other legislators, regardless of their party, will do what's right and stand behind our children and protect them and join this 
join this legislation. Your call to duty is to go out and call, go home, call your legislators. This is a quick session. I think it might be over in a day or two. Call them and ask them to support this legislation. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Jeff. And thank you for putting this group together, Jeff. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Melissa Jones, a mother of two. I'd like to give Melissa an opportunity to speak on this mandate and how it's affected her young children. Melissa? There are 31,000 people that live in my county. There were 1,692 positive cases in the past 15 months. 85 of those were at the school. It started off with two weeks to flatten the curve. Here we are 15 months later. We have eased up on masks for adults and young children, but the children ages six to 17 are still a threat. Why? We have had 63 straight days of decline and zero new positive cases in my county, zero. But we are still forcing our children to wear masks. Governor Cuomo, the New York State Department of Education, the New York State Department of Health and the CDC have all forced our children to wear masks for far too long. On Monday, when I got home, it was 97 degrees out. Our children sat in their schools, most of them with no AC, and most of the classrooms on the second and third floors forced to wear masks. That is abuse. Forcing our children to wear masks is abuse. Getting yelled at for pulling their mask down when it isn't a mask break is abuse. Yes. 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 Wearing a mask for hours a day under no medical supervision is abuse all instances in which my child has been reprimanded. My son and I had a conversation while riding in the car. Sorry. I asked him what he thought about not wearing a mask and taking a stand. He said, yeah, let's do it, mommy. And then a minute later, he said, mommy, you can't do that. I'll be the only one and I'll get yelled at. I tried doing that, taking my mask off when I couldn't breathe and I got yelled at. That's not right. That literally broke my heart. I worry about the long-term effects. Will Governor Cuomo, the Department of Health, the Department of Education and the CDC, and most importantly our schools, be liable if one of our children dies from heat exhaustion? Will they be responsible for the long-term effects, both mental and physical? I can assure you, they will not. At that point, it'll be, you should have used your own discretion. It has never been about discretion. This is about power and the almighty dollar. Our kids are not pawns. We are their parents and we know what is best for them. If you as a parent find it best to mask your child, then do that. If you want to vax your child, then do that too. It is your right to do what is best for your child. This comes down to the health and safety of our children. I can assure you Governor Cuomo does not give me money to help raise my children. And I will not take advice from him for anything. And certainly... And certainly not advice when it comes to raising my own children. Enough is enough. Everyone has the right to breathe fresh air, so let's make good on that. 63 days of straight decline. Zero new cases in my county as of yesterday. Why are kids still wearing masks? Our kids can't speak for themselves. We are their advocates. They deserve better. Enough is enough. Unmask our kids now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. 
And thank you all for coming out today to send a message, message to the governor and legislators in the majority that the time has come for our kids to be freed from this pointless and harmless mandate. It's time for parents to once again be empowered to make decisions for their children. They know better than any politician or bureaucrat in Albany to make myself clear. Governor Cuomo, Commissioner Zucker, and my colleagues in the majority, it's time to unmask our kids now. One more time to make sure that the second floor can hear us. It is time to unmask our kids now. God bless each and every one of you, your children, your families, and God bless still and always the greatest nation on earth these United States of America, thank you all very much.